All right, I'm going to start answering some of the other letters here. This is um, uh, November 22nd, 2019, little letter here. It says, Dear Brother, I finally sold my house and told the Lord that I would send extra donations to you when I did. Thank you for all you do. Part of this is from my brother also. God bless you and your family. Initials are LT and CD. So thank you very much. I really do appreciate that. Um, we're very blessed to be able to continue the ministry with the support of God's people. It's a, it's a great thing. And um, you, of course, when you give to this ministry, you are a partaker in the blessings that are going to come. You know, you're, uh, um, you know, Paul talks about the fruit that may abound to your account. The fruit that's born by this ministry, people getting saved, people turning to the King James Bible, getting straight, straightened out doctrinally that fruit will come back to you as well because you helped keep us going. So thank you for that. Another letter here. This is November the 14th, 2019. There's a letter. Um, Dear Brian, hi brother. I am writing this to tell you personally that I thank God I found your ministry. When I first got saved, I was watching the old Prophecy Club videos on YouTube. I found a video of Bill Schnevlin speaking about the King James Version. I heard him speak with the power of the Holy Spirit, and it really convicted me. I got down on my knees at the foot of my bed and asked God to save me in Jesus' name. I remember it was maybe in January or February of 2017. As a babe in Christ, I was hungry for spiritual food. I remember early on when I was saved, I got sucked into watching John Piper, John MacArthur, and a whole group of that um, group of preachers. I think, I think the Holy Spirit has led me away from those preachers. John Piper says he is a Christian hedonist. <laughs> what? So I eventually stopped watching them. I eventually bought my first King James Version Bible. You see, I always wanted a girlfriend, and sometimes I spend too much on my time on dating websites. I've witnessed to some people, though, and have given them scripture on how to be saved. I think I first discovered your channel in 2018, maybe around the summer months. I have never been so captivated with a preacher. I have watched so many of your videos. It reminds me of the video you put out, Proof That Saved Christians Can't Obsessively Listen to False Teachers. I love watching and reading the King James Version along with you and your videos. I am truly blessed. I really have not fellowshiped with so many other saved brethren um, on your live streams. Okay, I think I read that right. I am 29 years old. Honestly, brother, the days are coming to a close. I just want to watch all of your videos that I can when I come home after work. I believe in the catching up before the time of Jacob's trouble. I believe in eternal security. I write my tracks and witness to lost people on dating sites. On some dating sites, brother, I talk to Baptists that partake in the giving of communion. Man, I didn't know how large a group the RCC was on all sects. Not K KJV Bible believers though. We are the true church and body. I try to live and meditate on the words of the Lord every day. Not actual meditation, just re reciting them over in my head. Yeah. Anyway, brother, thank you for reading this. I will continue to support your ministry as much as I can. Some months I will uh, tribute more depending on my situation. I'm glad I finally started to support your ministry. I have grown exponentially and I I have been told by some Christ, Christian KJV readers I have talked with, I thank you and give the glory to God. Oh, and I don't, and I do believe in the Godhead. God the Father is the soul, Jesus the Son is the body, and the Holy Ghost is the Spirit. These three are one, 1 John 5, 7. Really kind of easy to get if you just believe what the Bible says. I can't wait to see how God blesses you now and in the future. I do have you and your wife Catherine and your son Oliver in my prayers. If you could say a prayer for me, that would be great. Oh, I am a good artist. I could send you a drawing sometime. Grace and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and the name is, uh, I'll just say M.M. First and last initials there. Um, okay, then he goes on here. This is a... This is uh, two days later. wrote another letter and he stapled it together. Dear Brian, hi brother. I wanted to let you know a little bit about myself. I am 29 years old and I live in, um, I, I'll, I'll just say PR, Illinois. There. I try to keep stuff confidential here. That's why I'm saying that. 
I work as a scientist testing water and soil samples from the environment and manufacturing companies. I am single and content with that as I am on dating websites and as I don't go to bars or clubs because I am born again since early 2017. I'll say more about the dating website thing in just a minute. I'm not letting that go, but I'm just trying to get through the, the letter here. Because I used to do the same thing, and there's a lot of dangers there. I rarely drink, if ever. I don't smoke. However, the dating websites seem to captivate a lot of my attention. The attention that I receive is sometimes overwhelming, and I do struggle with wanting a woman who has similar beliefs as me and who I find attractive. I struggle with the process of finding a girl because there are so many profiles on so many websites. I know the Bible believing community is very small, but my hope is still, or my hope is that there will be a godly woman just right for me. For now, I will abide as the Apostle Paul did. My trouble is that as I get tempted and go after women, I shouldn't. Uh, I am not looking for casual fornication. I have had many offers, but the temptations get thrown at me. I want that covenant type of relationship with a woman that I have with Jesus. It's that fine balance of being present on the dating scene, but also not allowing it to become an addiction. As of right now, I am on two Christian dating websites. It's extremely hard to find a KJV Bible believer who doesn't go to a Baptist building or any other building. I didn't grow up with the Sunday schools and all that. I went through the Catholic system. I got out of it, thankfully, and got truly born again, saved by the Lord, Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. I am extremely against any notion of Catholic doctrine. I was surprised how the Lord led me to your channel. Um, I really took a liking to your teaching and watched lots of your videos. I don't think I ever thought about a catching away or a millennial reign before watching your videos. Well, if you had Catholic upbringing, then that's why. Um, they believe the church has to be here and there is no millennial kingdom of Jesus Christ. We're actually in it right now if you get into real Catholic teaching. Um, I know, they, they, they well, it's not exactly, yeah, I know, I get it, but that's basically what they believe. I'm simplifying it. Um, I believe the Lord is using you and your ministry to prepare battle-tested saints to help Him in the Millennial Kingdom and eternity. Your videos have helped me exponentially grow in the Word as a born-again KJV Bible-believing Christian. Though also, it feels really good to call someone brother. I mean, I am an only child, but the word brother means so much more. It means we are looking for our Lord Jesus Christ appearing. I never called someone brother and actually meant it. We are brothers because we are Jesus Christ's. Uh, that's just my idea, I guess. No, that's what the Bible teaches. It's like Paul calling Timothy his beloved son. In Christ, we are truly brothers. We are Christ's. Yeah, and we are. I have days and even weeks where I come home and play video after video of yours and read along with the video. I started to contribute my tithings to your ministry. I waited too long too long to donate and support your ministry. I'm glad the Lord put that in my heart and mind. I pray for you and your family. Please say a quick prayer for me to keep spiritual attacks at bay. Thanks. Uh, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The initials there. Okay. Uh, brother, please stay away from the dating websites. Okay. It is dabbling um, with lust. I used to be on the websites and things like that many years ago before I found my wife. Um, and I quit doing that stuff and the Lord brought me a wife. Okay, but you get on those websites, there are women on there that are not Christians on, on Christian dating websites. There are very, very wicked women on there. Um, I personally knew of a story, a church I used to go to, a church building I used to go to, say it that way, in Ephrata, Pennsylvania. There was a young guy going there and he met a Christian, you know, girl on a website Christian website and um, they started dating and she basically pushed herself on him and they started to fornicate and they ended up getting married he married her because he thought well we've done this so I probably should marry her and he did and she ran up I forget how many tens of thousands of dollars in credit card debt and um, then left him it was out fornicating with other guys then and the guy was so distraught that he actually went, uh, he because he owed, I think it was something like $40,000 or something like this. And he actually went to a bank with a gun and just walked in and said, call the police. I'm here to rob the bank. And they called the police and he went outside intending to be shot down by the police. And thankfully the police were a little bit more level-headed and didn't just gun the guy down. And he dropped the gun. They arrested him and he's serving time in prison now. So he's got prison time plus this big debt that he has to pay off 
And the worst part is he found out that this uh, Christian girl that he met on the Christian dating site was actually doing this to multiple different men, the same thing. Marrying, you know, coming to meet them, fornicating, marrying, running up all kinds of debt, and then leaving them with the debt. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that you'll get on Christian dating sites, okay? Um, stay away from Christian sites, these Christian dating sites. I cannot uh, speak against them enough. All right. Um, another letter here. Hello, Brian. My name is M, male name there. I sent you a letter once before, but I'm not sore if you were... Not sure if you received it. I'm from Canada. Thank you again for the videos that you put out. The Lord has helped me a lot through your preaching, and I thank him a lot for you, and I pray for you too. I am a King James Bible-believing Christian, a sinner only saved by the grace of God. The Lord, he's been showing me truth over the years and helping me to get the sin out of my life and has used your preaching for a lot of it. If I may, I do have one question for you. I'll start it on the next page. Question. Do you know of any... Or have you heard of any Christians that do not know the exact date that God saved them? I'm one of them. Um, I believe that God saved me about 10 years ago or so when I came to him as a sinner and called upon his name, putting my faith in Jesus Christ for my sins. But I don't know the exact date or even the month, let alone the year that he saved me. I'm 41 years old. Yes, there's been a changed life, and I know that God saved me according to his word, 1 John 5.13. I know that some Christians know the exact date and some even write it down in their Bibles, but sometimes it bothers me that I can't do that. I trust the Lord and it actually causes me to remember that we walk by faith, not by sight. Exactly. Although I can't point to a specific date on a calendar, it helps me to just trust Him and live by faith. So what do you think of this? Does a Christian need to know the date? God bless you and your family, and I hope you get the Cranberry Water Buff got the Cranberry Water Buffalo Note Takers Bible. I had shipped to you from Church Bible Publishers. I have the same one, but mine is the brown one. I love their Bibles. In Christ, M. Um, yes, I did get the Bible. Yes, I made a video about it. Thank you, thank you very much, because um, we got this letter after we received that Bible. Uh, do you have to know the exact date? No. Um, it isn't some kind of a, a thing. I, I can't make a statement and say that anybody who writes down the date, it's false or whatever. I can't say that. You know, I don't know. Um, but remember, it's God that does the saving. And you are exactly right. You walk by faith and not by sight. And so if it's some prayer that you prayed and whatever else, and you write that down, I prayed this thing, I did whatever, and today's the day I got saved, well, that's iffy. Did God save you at that point in time? You know, I don't know. You know, me personally, I can't tell you the exact day. I remember when it happened, but there was a lot of other things that were going on, and it was, you know, it wasn't some exact just, you know, uh, I kneeled down and I prayed, and it was just this, you know, light came through the window and, oh, you know, and then got me, and, and, and then I, whoa, I'm saved now, you know. It was, it was kind of a thing of the Lord started to gradually change my mind on things and, and I could feel, okay, something happened there and things just changed a lot in my life. And, and then as more and more time went by, it was, whoa, okay, uh, yeah, I think it took this time. So the exact day, I, I don't remember the exact day. Um, so... Um, that's my answer to that. Another little short letter here. Dear Brother Brian and Sister Catherine, um, my husband, beginning with the letter K, and I want you to know that we uh, love you and pray for you every day. Please accept this token of our appreciation for your dedication to our God and Savior Jesus Christ. Love, K and A, and the last name starts with a P. Thank you. And uh, it's good to hear from you. Um, Again, I'm trying to keep people's names private here. Um, I've known that couple for a while, and always good to hear from them and, and things. Um, Brian, I appreciate your videos. There is a famine for truth in this world. Finding a church that is Bible correct is very hard to find um, in this day and age. I am soon to be 75, and the Mennonite church I grew up in is dead and buried spir spiritually, and I thought they would never stray, but this is true of almost all. Exactly. God bless you. Um, B, and then the last name begins with T. 
Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, finding a church that is Bible-based, uh, they're not if they have a church building, okay, first and foremost. You've got to understand that. Um, but I, you know, I understand in the past there were people that were in church buildings and they meant well and they, you know, whatever else. I used to go to church buildings and be very active there uh, when I got first, first got saved and the Lord led me out of that whole system. Um, if this work or this council be of men, it will come to naught. And the church buildings, there's no scripture for church buildings in this book right here. People have done that that were saved. I was not lost when I was going to some church building, but the Lord got me out of that system. And the Lord will get you out of that system if you're genuinely born again. Um, oh, let's see here. There's a couple of big letters here. Um, I guess I'll do this one. This is a big one. Very interesting letter. And some of this stuff I'm going to have to leave out some details just simply because I don't want... You know, there's, there's lost relatives that might watch the video and they know, know that they're being talked about and whatever else. <clears throat> um, so if I have to skip some things, I hope you understand that. Brother Brian and Sister Catherine, this is uh, September the 3rd of 2019. Um, you know, uh, it says, first off, I just wanted to thank you for your ministry, for your efforts and stance in fighting the good fight. I've been watching through your videos this past week and have found them very edifying. From all I can tell, biblically sound, both convicting and comforting. I appreciate them very much. Um, I have so much to say, I hardly know where to start. I tried to to pa post a comment on one of your videos, but after three tries, it wouldn't post. YouTube messes with my comments all the time. I don't know what to say. Not sure if someone on the other end was stopping it or if it was the Lord keeping it back. A letter is probably the better way to go anyway. And I love letter writing, though it's difficult to employ in this modern technolo technological age. Your website wouldn't load on my computer for a few days, but it worked today, and I was able to obtain your mailing address. Thank you for disclosing it. Now, where to begin? My dad first found your ministry five or six years ago, back when the Lord began to convict him of his depravity. Your videos led him to ordering the family KJV Bibles from the local church Bible or local Bible publisher's site, so I wanted to thank you especially for that. Our life was in a rough state then, the last straw of our ungodly life. The Lord started to work on my dad, broke him utterly, until my dad had nothing in the world left but to cry unto him for mercy and grace. He ordered the Bibles, seven of them, one for each in the family, and as the Lord had it, they arrived the day he was going to leave. He's a lumberjack for a traveling lumberjack show. For Florida, I remember opening the box and the um, solemn dispersal of those blessed books. Then a quick hug, goodbye, and he was off. That was the end of the old life in so many ways. Uh, my parents divorced that same year, but in the turmoil, God saved my dad. I know full well, had their marriage remained, it would have only gotten worse. People can't play with fire and not get burned. Thankfully, God reigns, and he called the shots. That was back in March 2015, I believe, when those Bibles arrived. My dad had talked talk them up, so me and my four siblings would read them here and there, mistakenly believing we were Christians because we read the Bible. I can laughably remember... When I decided, I'd let Jesus into my heart. But as it is, as is painfully obvious now, I knew nothing about truth then. I saw my dad again March of the following year. By then, he had come to know the Lord, and through his life, and though his life was in shambles, he at least had the Bible. You know, it, it, I gotta just stop right there. Um, a lot of people think that you get saved as a Christian, and, and life just becomes wonderful and whatever else. Uh, you know, there's a lot of times that it, it, your life will actually get a lot worse before it gets better. But continuing, we were able to spend time with him for a few weeks and he expounded portions of the Bible. Me and my brother Jay, Jay I'll say, I said the full name, especially listened. And us five kids accompanied him to a week-long show in Del Mar, California. We were living in Oregon at the time. And Dad put on some audio sermons by Eon Paisley and Charles Spurgeon. It was during Spurgeon's justification by grace that I can recall having an inkling of understanding and, des and desire for the Lord. I prayed for salvation all through that week. I imagine I was saved then um, for the love that I started to feel for the Lord after that. For the desire to read and cherish the Bible, after the week we started to attend a local Baptist church. I enjoyed a lot of things there, but there were other things that troubled me exceedingly. Things like the lack of reverence, like the goofing off, me and my siblings especially 
J, would go to all the services and kids Bible studies, hungering for the word, and always left disappointed that they were more there were more games and pizza eating than reading of the Bible. Exactly. Hearing text read from other Bible versions was also exceedingly vexing. I was homeschooled up until my sophomore year in high school, where I was forced by my mom to attend those three public years, and a couple of my siblings are still stuck there. I never liked school much. We had always been distrusting of society, even as heathens. But when I began to love God, I hated it even more. Not one inkling of truth taught in those institutions. And we watched Christian Pinto's documentary, A Lamp in the Dark, which both increased our love for the KJV Bible and our distrust of the world. With the Jesuits and the loose, on the loose, excuse me, um, who could trust all things taught. All the things taught, yeah. The Jesuits are very much involved in public schooling. I only mention this because it was the halfway mark of my junior year that served as division. division. Um, the first half worldly in my studies, the second half weary and only wanting the Bible's truth. Back to the church point. We attended for a few months just as kids. Dad's uh, Dad remarried in Indiana. Just quickly not to justify sinning or... Um, anything I know a lot about the remarriage issue, and my dad has studied it extensively. He is remarried, though, which is a great source of trouble. But what to do? It's hard to tell sometimes, not sure myself what to say. I'm not trying to justify or defend sin, but then I know much of dad's heart and struggle in the area. I trust the Lord will sort it out in due time. But through a series of events, um, example given my dad getting into an argument with the pastor, us kids stopped going more out of loyalty to my dad than anything. I fully admit that I've carnally done so many things, but the pattern appears to be after perhaps some chastening, the Lord using it to good. Um, uh, she wrote here on the side thing, she says, of course, um, rereading it, it looks like I'm defending it. Sigh. <laughs> not my intent, but I'm. it's not my struggle either. So all I can do is hope that things will be sorted out. I need to pray more. The marriage, remarriage thing, yeah, I know. It gets really, really sketchy in there. I, I get it. I could say a lot on that, but I, I'm not going to. I'm just going to continue reading on with the letter here. Because uh, I've preached on the thing of divorce, marriage, remarriage, so I'm not going to get into it here. But um, So out of church, a few years period, uh, I really wanted a church to attend, feeling that it was impossible to follow a lot of the biblical commands without a community of believers. It's always our habit to live fairly isolated. I've never been a part of a community. It's partly be perhaps why I don't feel much love for people. I'm sorely lacking in the charity department, to my utter shame. Anyway, I wanted to live with my dad for, number one, he was slash is a Christian, and number two, I firmly believe uh, and believed that it was the place for a godly woman to be under her father's roof. So for part of 2016, I lived with dad who'd moved back to Oregon and we studied a lot and longed for a church. I graduated high school and despite everybody's prodding for me to quote, go to college, I stubbornly refused and continue so being convinced of Colossians 2.8, which has often been pressed on my heart. Um, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, which college is very much philosophy. And debt as well, I might add. The end of 2016 and most of 2017, I had to move back with mom and to keep the peace, got a job as a caregiver at a local assisted living home, despite my firm belief that it was better for a woman to stay at home. I did that for a year. At times was able to read my Bible, but often feeling distant and troubled. Being out in the world, I almost got into a relationship, but thankfully God kept me from falling to sin. Literally, every time I tried to set up something with the guy, it would coincidentally, quote-unquote, <laughs> fall through. I saw it happening as it happened, knew it was the Lord's doing. I would have done foolishly for coveting, but God is so merciful and did not permit me. I'm, gracefully, I'm, I'm grateful daily for that. It illustrated my weakness and foolishness to me and God's care. The guy eventually moved away. And in August of that year, I was finally able to move back with my dad, who was back in Indiana. Being with Dad for the past year now, a lot has happened. Dad and I had already discussed me not wanting to work outside the home and to try and live in closer alignment to the Bible. I wore skirts for the year and f liked feeling like a woman. Tried to learn how to keep home, but it's always a struggle with my stepmom. 
She's not saved at all, has no fear or love for God, but she claims to be a Christian. Gotta love that. There's always so much trouble there. My dad ends up having to compromise to keep peace with her, but then we start compromising with our faith. Sigh, she writes. Yeah. When there are troubles financially, she panics and harps on, and so a couple times I tried to get jobs so as to keep, help keep peace. The first job fell through because I don't have stellar driving skills and winter was approaching. That was last December. I considered it to be God who had stopped it, and for a time there was no more discussion in that area. We were attending a primitive Baptist church, mostly for the KJV Bible. I enjoyed that, but that fell through. Funny that was in January, February of 2019 we stopped attending. It was March, the anniversary week of Bibles and Del Mar, and God convicted me of my sins. Dad was reading John Bunyan's Grace, abounding the chief of sinners, and I started to wonder whether or not I had ever truly pondered the state of my soul, which leads me to question whether I'd been truly saved before March of this year. I want to say yes, but then I continued to live fairly worldly, falling back into my old ways more and more. I grew up sore, troubled, simultaneously trying, tried to cling to sins while reading scripture. It's hard to say when it happened, but in that course of time, God hit me, and I prayed as I never prayed before. And God, faithful as he is, delivered. I felt a love and desire for God as I hadn't since Del Mar, this time stronger. I read the Bible like a maniac, couldn't stop from singing and praying and studying. Nothing in the world troubled me. I loved the Lord and he loved me. Um, and for a couple of months, time seemed timeless. God was wonderful, the Bible wonderful. That alone mattered. I still cherish that time. We decided to try a Presbyterian church, a local plant, uh, plant, you know, in other words, somebody put it there. I still cherish that, or no, I don't cherish that time, excuse me, for a couple of months, but as always uh, became key issue, the baptism process. Why wouldn't, or why won't any church baptize scripturally? Why is it a local membership sign instead of the answering of a good conscience and in the Lord, his body? I also started to read other theological writings, which at first seemed great, but I think it, I started to trust them too much. The emphasis on church became greater after we stopped attending that church. I felt greatly discouraged, fell into a slump, stopped reading scripture. Another problem is that by trying to attend the said church, we had had to compromise on the King James Bible. We still clung to ours, of course, but hearing ESV uh, crap spouted on the pulpit, well, we tried to compromise, and what did we get? Mm -hmm. A storm. Part of June through July and most of August, a series of events, so we stopped attending that church. I felt miserable. Uh, too much emphasis, I think, on a quote-unquote church and compromise on studying the Word. Too much compromise in daily life to keep peace with my stepmom. We fell off of our healthy eating role, which we began in January with the Lord's help. Everything fell apart. And then come end of June, my stepmom starts pressuring me about acting like a grown-up, meaning get a job and learning how to take care of myself. Um, on one day that my dad was at work, she pulled me aside to give me a talk about facts and things, one of the most worldly speeches I ever heard, terribly uncomfortable, and it broke something in me. I had a terrible bitterness in my soul, felt I was the biggest burden on the family and all her comments about it's not a biblical world and how she proved living by faith didn't work and about my unattractive attire and need to get out in the world, have no hope of getting myself a husband the way I'm doing it, etc., etc., etc. Lost people do that. Just seemed too much. I'm timid and, un and unambitious, a terrible fool and coward as it is. I had tried to keep peace, but all my efforts didn't amount to much. Already hating my flesh and distrusting my own heart so much, I started to wonder if I was doing everything wrong. Gosh, that was a miserable, dark time. I tried to get a job. My second attempt, it worked out. But in the bitterness of my soul, I still prayed. What bitterly asked God to make the job work out if he wanted it to, or to prevent it if he didn't. I couldn't bring myself to read the Bible either. Inwardly, I felt I was betraying God. Had all my intents and convictions been a lie thus far? Um, had I deluded myself by staying out of college and not pursuing the world? Uh, all the interview process and the physical drug test was a pain to get done. My stepmom decided to opt out of helping out at all, me not driving needing a driver. 
and left to visit her family, left my dad to have to take off time at work to drive me, again miserable times. After a stressful, stressful few weeks, I began to work and my dad had to drop me off and pick me up. This lasted a few weeks. We finally got the spare car insured, and so I was going to start driving myself. Oh, a little backtracking as I missed a step. Sorry. So the car needed to be insured to legally drive it. We did so. Then the day I was to start the job, the truck broke down. Glorious, really. <laughs> right in the driveway. I know God broke down the truck, and I praise him for it. Um, though my dad, as I prematurely mentioned, drove me back and forth a week for a couple of weeks without a means to presently fix the truck and with no help from my stepmom to cart, cart me about her too busy with her own job and fun life, I had to resign. It was a flood of, of relief. I know God answered my prayer by breaking down the truck, but home life again worsened and I started to feel ashamed, ashamed to even be alive. I don't like causing people trouble, and without reading the Bible for strength, there's nothing to cling to. I've scarcely spoken a sentence to my stepmom since the whole storm erupted. She terrifies me, actually, as worldly women do. Um, i got to just tell a story here real quick. just reminds me of a story about you know, a woman going to work and just saying, Lord, do you really want this? And, and Lord uh, you know, does something to make it no. I actually uh, um, got a letter the one time we heard from a, a former actress, Hollywood actress, um, that was in a big, big soap operas, and she got saved, and she thought, well, you know, I got to finish my contract here. I got to, I got to stick with this job thing, and we're making good money, whatever else. I'll just finish this season of the show, and uh, she actually went out to go out on stage to act, and her hip dislocated. <laughs> and <laughs> it's kind of a, oh, okay, yeah, I can't be in the show now. So, God will do that. And, you know, again, lost people, that the, the, the easy believism people, they'll say, oh, look at this, all these struggles here. This is work salvation. No, it's salvation, somebody that truly got saved in that struggle with the flesh. It's Romans chapter 7. The good things that you know you shouldn't do, you're doing, and you're saying, oh, I'm just hating myself. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Yeah, there's struggles are there. See, when you truly get saved, you struggle. There's problems with family, problems with jobs doubts and fears and all kinds of things that come in this is what true salvation is like okay it's not some kind of a thing of you just go mentally assent to the facts of the bible and say oh i'm saved now i'll just go out and live like the rest of the world and and, and declare i'm a christian it doesn't work that way if god saves you there's going to be some turmoil in your life okay <laughs> But finally, my, decided, my dad decided to pick up Lumberjack shows again as he'd been trying after quote-unquote normal jobs for a while, but to no avail. Um, so he took me along to Saratoga, New York, and I was able to visit family. Now I'm staying with an aunt in Indiana while he travels and works for a couple months. I'm so glad he's doing shows again. It's the occupation God made him for. I've been staying with my aunt for a few weeks now, being away from my stepmom. I've been able to relax some. For a few Sundays, I attended a local Reformed Baptist church. It was fine. Met a couple women who liked to talk about the Lord. But two weeks ago, now it was, I was feeling uh, low spiritually, though better than I had been feeling, still far from optimal. And it happened one day. I was compelled to fast and pray. Things had been better since then. My dad told me about the Jack Chick videos by David Daniels. I watched those, and my love for the KGV was rekindled. Oh, I never want to compromise on the Bible again. It's too precious. It's God's own word. So, though apart, uh, me and my dad have been coming to a lot of those sort of sorts of convictions. I watched most of his videos, then Dad uh, linked me to one of yours, The Six Things That Lead to Depression in the Life of a Christian. Boy, that was what I needed. And I watched a few of your videos concerning women, should a woman, woman work before marriage, and the dangers of a single Christian woman. I want to thank you with every inch of my soul for those the latter specifically. Uh, I wept sore watching it, the single woman one, because it's everything I've felt for the past four years. Every word you spoke as if you'd read my mind. Every Bible verse you read, the ones I'd read, kept close in my heart and cherished. What I want to be as a woman for the Lord, I can never thank you enough for it. It is the most comforting video I've ever watched in my life. It's so good to know I'm not crazy. <laughs> Yeah, there's other crazy people. <laughs> Understand what I'm saying. Uh, the others, that others take stock in the Bible too. Oh, I'm getting teary-eyed just thinking of it. 
and in hindsight I can see and understand the sore battle that was waged upon within my soul. My faith was tried and I was unprepared. I failed, but the Lord prevails over all. Your video pulled me through and gave me such comfort, um, sweet and right from God's own word. It reminded me of my Lord's own words, and now I'm seeing where God has kept me and helped me and delivered me in those in these hard months. Um, Lord, will, just say this again. I gotta just pause here. Um, the Lord will put you through some stuff when you first get saved. The trying of your faith. I mean, it's always gonna be there through your life, but right away that trying of your faith can be rough at times. Um, but the Lord is, is you know, it's kind of like basic training in the military. You know, you get yelled at and screamed at by your commanding officers and they're trying to prepare you for the battle that's coming. They aren't going to just say, oh, okay, oh, okay, sweetie, and, and just going out into the battle, you're going to get killed out there. You have to be screamed at. You have to be yelled at. You have to be doing push-ups in the rain and crawling through the mud and whatever, you know, spiritually speaking, I'm saying here. You're going to get yelled at. Yellatives. That's kind of a good one. It's not relatives, they're relatives. <laughs> you're going to get relatives yelling at you. Uh, you're going to have financial problems and health problems and all kinds of other stuff. The Lord is trying your faith. And you get through that stuff and, and the blessings He'll just pour out. I'll tell you what. And He won't suffer you to be tempted above that you're able to bear. Remember that. Um... I want to cling to my King James and never compromise on it again. I want to cling to, the, to my Lord, for in Him is the fullness of all things. I want to live as the woman God made me to His glory. Thank you, Sister Catherine, for being as you are. I always want to meet a godly biblical woman, and to find one in, is such a relief. Thank you, Brother Brian, for the stand you take, despite the difficulty you face for it. It means so much to find Christians after so long a time. I've had my fair share of the Elijah syndrome, but God ever has His remnant. Elijah syndrome, you know, being her way of saying, you know, I'm left alone and they seek my life and there's nobody else, you know. And there are. There's a lot of us out there. The church issue has been such a struggle. Seeing what you say in your videos makes me consider a lot. Has God kept me out? Has God kept us out of them? Yes. I'll answer that. Everyone compromises on doctrine and Bible, and though I compromise, there's never rest. David Daniels said in a video, compromise only goes one way, and that to Rome. I don't want to compromise anymore. That's very true. Your videos, along with renewed Bible study and prayer, have been such a blessing. Help me to remember the faith. Makes me feel that perhaps my convictions aren't foolish, but are from God. These past five to six months, I've went, wanted to watch movies less and less. I cut out secular music years ago, and I don't want to read anything but the Bible. I don't want to keep wasting time. My body, spirit, and soul belong to the Lord. I just want Him... I desperately needed him. Need him. He's my Lord, the, the Lord, and oh, I'm so glad that he is. Many of your videos have meant a lot to me, but I best wrap up this letter. Your Trinity versus Godhead videos have been great. I guess I didn't even know what the Trinity was. I've often used the term, but my understanding was that Jesus alone had flesh and was God entire. <laughs> Just that simple. Yeah. You expounded it beautifully, helped me understand better. It was always a subject that confused me for what everyone teaches. But you used Bible verses, which I recognized, and it all made sense. I look forward to searching the Bible for myself now. I don't want to simply take people's word anymore. I want to read it in the Bible for myself. Amen. That's what the whole thing's about. King James Video Ministries. Not Brian Denlinger Ministries Incorporated. Okay? The book. Cover myself up. It's that. That's your authority. I don't know what the future holds. Only God knows that. All I know is that I wanted to learn from God and go where He leads me. I am so foolish and cowardly, though. Most of my family extended still doesn't know that I'm a Christian. And to those who do, I've yet to really emphasize my stance. That'll come in time. Don't worry about that. I'm ashamed of myself daily for that. I love the Lord so much, but shamefully fear the world and men too. I need to pray harder and wait patiently. I know God provides in His own time, but I'm by always worry in the meantime that I'm failing. I'm still not baptized and neither is my dad. We want to be so badly, but can't find a way to. It's so discouraging. And as I've tried various churches, I always feel an outsider, out of place, and as though I have to, to compromise. Again, seeing your videos has been a comfort. Hearing what you say and points you make on Scripture. 
I want to live daily for God. I need to stop compromising. I feel, feel that for four years I've been waiting, hoping that someday I'd be able, but God isn't mocked. I reap what I sow. I intend to pray more and trust that the Lord will provide. I'm foolish and sinful and have constantly messed up again and again these past four years. I'm constantly ashamed to recall, yet the Lord has forgiven me. And Christ stands now in heaven on the right hand of the throne of God. I hope I don't exalt myself in any wise over the course of this letter. I only want to exalt and praise God. I love my dad fiercely, too. All I can do is pray for him right now, too. I'll be 21 next month. Life seems so long, but God will pull me through. He alone is my comfort and my stay. We run this race with patience, looking to Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, Hebrews chapter 12. I'm so grateful to look back on my life and see how God has all along led me, how he's preserved me. And it's a great, and it's great comfort to hear of other, others' accounts of his working in their lives. Your separated lifestyle essentially mirrors the kind I've always wanted. God has blessed you, and I'm glad. I remember I was uh, 36 before I met my wife. So you're 21. Uh, it's in his timing. And you'll go through those times of the, the hardships and whatever else. Uh, you get saved, it isn't God just goes boom over to here where you know you want to be and whatever else. The changed life that I preach is a gradual thing. Okay, It isn't just instant holiness, boom, everything from the past is gone. The sinless perfection, boom, right away. That isn't it. People lie about me and say I preach that, and I don't. Um, I guess I'm kind of rambling at this point. Forgive me. It's okay. I do the same thing. I hope you're not bothered by my Cliff Notes uh, rundown of the last four years of my life. I'm not. I wasn't trying to complain or talk bad about others, but the struggle is real and the devil uses many devices. I still feel I'm a new Christian, weak and in need of being taught. Yet it's the Lord, honestly, who's taught me thus far. All my faith comes from him, what he's shown me in the, his word, and through the things he has wrought in my life. Praise Him. It's when I start to covet things outside the Bible and His presence that I suffer. The chastening is real, needed, and blessed. Praise God for His faithfulness. One last time, thank you both. May God continue to bless you and your ministry, continue to strengthen your marriage and parenthood. May He bless your family, your faith, and keep you ever dependent on Him. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Much love in the Spirit. Uh, the name A first and B Beginning of the last name. P.S. I was wondering if you could do a study in the difference be, differences between a spirit and a soul in a man. Not sure if it's something scripture explains, but I keep wondering about it. Very good point. Um, something I honestly need to do more study on. I, I uh, That's a big subject, and like I said, it's, it's going to be something I'm going to need to study myself a little bit more. I have an idea. I have studied it a little bit, but I just... The one thing I studied it from, I had a brother send me a video on it, and it was good, but it was kind of citing, citing new versions a little, and so, you know, I scratched that out. Um, I need to do the research myself, and so we'll see. Um, another letter here. This is from... Um, uh, A.W., name from Arizona. Okay. Dear Brother Brian, Sister Catherine, and Oliver, my name is A.W. Um, I was raised in church buildings, lived a double life growing up, repented, and placed my faith in Jesus Christ at the age of 19. I prayed many times as a child to receive Christ, but truly came to the end of myself later in life. Very similar to what I did. After all this, I went to a Reformed church for many years, learning the tulip system. Oh, did I think I had things figured out. Ha, ha, ha. Um... Calvinism, if you don't know what tulip means. Total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and predestination of the saints, I think is what it is. Or perseverance of the saints. I've heard both. At about age 30, while browsing YouTube, I came across a Ken Hoven video about the KJV, which sparked my interest. Don't worry, I don't follow him anymore. It's sad how he has fallen away. Yeah. Then I came across your videos. I thank the Lord that he used your ministry to lead me to his perfect, preserved word of God. It took me about three years to sort things out. I read books on both sides of the issue. I flip-flopped countless times on what I thought I believed, but praise God finally put full faith that the book, um, the King James Bible, is word for word exactly what God says. Amen. I'm 38 years uh, now, and my heart still thrills with excitement at that truth. 
As I started reading and believing my Bible, God rescued me out of the evil system of Calvinism. And it is very evil. Catholics, there's, I have a Catholic book where they promote Calvinism, okay, including Jesuits, Jesuit scholars and things. Uh, Calvinism is a, is a philosophical, you know, bunch of nonsense. Thanks to the studies on church, church buildings, my family and I got out of one for about a year. Then we went to another one, big mistake, and recently left it. I forgot how bad it was the first time, I guess. There's so much to tell, but suffice, suffice it to say that I relate very much with many of your st stories about church buildings. This evening, I repented to the Lord about attending buildings, social clubs. Um, recently, I was blessed to understand the heresy of the Trinity and the truth of the Godhead. Thanks so much, my dear brother. It has changed my life. You are the only person on YouTube that I have seen truly preaching this doctrine. God is using you. I'm not trying to give you pride just by way of encouragement. I know it gets hard for all of you. I've been married to name K for almost 15 years now. She is with child with number seven. Our other children are 12-year-old, 11-year-old, 9-year-old, 7-year-old, 5-year-old, and 2-year-old. Praise the Lord, that's neat. We are now worshiping at home, and I don't know of very many King James Bible-believing Christians in our area at all. I love watching you preach. I don't agree with every detail, but definitely most everything. Keep up the good work. God bless you and your sweet family. You are in my prayers. Your brother in our Lord Jesus Christ, he is come in the flesh. <laughs> uh, A.W. and family. So, thank you. It's a good letter. Appreciate that. All right. Here we have one from Belgium. Okay, which side? Oh, there it is. All right. Okay. Let's keep looking at my camera there, making sure my battery power is okay. I'm not sure how much time I have on the camera, but um, to Brian Denlinger, first of all, I want to say that your ministry has helped already helped us as a family very hard. Our faith is in the Lord, works harder and harder every day, thanks to you. Our sincere thanks for that, and may God watch over your family. In Jesus' name, amen. It has been a while since I wrote another letter, but I still wanted to show you these things and ask you a question afterwards about certain things, if it is possible. A few weeks ago, I was with my mother, who is still in the Catholic religion. We tried to assist her as much as possible in these difficult times of organized religion. It is still bad to see how she is still interwoven in that Catholic smokescreen. It still hurts me how she keeps up with these pagan traditions. I hope that someday God will open her eyes and show her the way to the path of biblical Christianity. Um, while we were visiting Mother, I read in the Christian magazine, Church and Life, in Dutch, Kirk and Leven, um, Leven, I guess, that she receives weekly from her church an interesting article and some blaspheming pictures, which I wanted to keep you informed about. The article that I want to show you in the appendix deals with the struggle of good and evil by a Dutch religious teacher by profession, Bart Willemann and how that religion penetrates into literature. That is the main title at the top of the photo marked in yellow. Everything has been translated into English. In a lecture of Christian training in the Diocese of Antwerp, Belgium, Bart Willemann investigates the link between the popular literary series on TV, Games of Thrones, and Christian thinking and belief. According to Bart Willemann, Willemann John Ronald Rule Tolkien, um, had a clear view of the world and the religious aspects of Tolkien were also the subjects, subject of a lecture in the Antwerp Diocese. Uh, studied, I studied Tolkien extensively and the guy was not a saved man. Definitely lost. The choice was logical for Tolkien because he profiled, him, profiled himself as a believer. Martin Yellow, number one and two. Tolkien is a father of the fantasy genre, says Willimon. He also adds that Tolkien writes about the epic battle between good and evil and especially that attracts Bart Willimon. Typical Catholic pagan philosophy, marked with a number three. Willimon adds that Tolkien can consciously chooses to omit unambiguous, unambiguous references to religion because he wants to create a universal ideal of good and evil, marked with a number four. 
This is a pr brief summary of the article about Tolkien and his way of thinking about good and evil suggested by pagan television series. I'm personally not surprised that lectures are given in churches about the delusions of Tolkien. This is clearly a devil. There's clearly a devil in him. And that people, yeah, I just got to stop here for a minute. Tolkien actually wrote in one of his later letters, later on in his life, he said, the demon of invention has finally left me. And he said about another letter, he said, uh, the writer of the Lord of the Rings, and I don't mean myself, essentially is what he said. So he admitted that demons wrote the Lord of the Rings. And um, Tolkien's whole vision was, was basically the magical concept of good magic versus evil magic, black magic versus white magic, uh, which is nonsense. Okay. Um, and, you know, that's what Catholicism is. They, they think it's white magic. But, um, and that people like Bart Willeman, a religious teacher, can agree with this, pure pagan philosophy in the highest degree. This is, that is my opinion of this completely nonsensical story. Perhaps this is relevant for you in a study, so I wanted to show you how far these pagan practices go. Described in a Flemish Catholic magazine and lectures on this held here in Belgium. No wonder people who listen to this nonsense, including my mother, can get to know the real uh, God of God from heaven. It is a smokescreen of lies and illusions preached by devils of the Roman Catholic Church. If you have the time, feel free to let me know what your opinions are about this case of good and bad by Tolkien. Um, I'll just show this real quick here before we go on. Um, this is the article that he's talking about here. Uh, You know, when you have Catholics take over a country, they will let me get this tape off of here. Catholics take over a country, they can pull all kinds of, of pagan stuff and witches are good. Witches witches teach us valuable lessons and sorcery is wonderful and everything's okay. You know, if they take the Bible away from a country and the average person doesn't have a Bible based worldview, you know, Judeo Christian view as they would say, some people would say. Uh, it's not, which is not really accurate, I know. But um, when when the Bible's taken away from people, uh, you can get away with all kinds of devilment, which is what why the Catholics don't ever want people to have the Bible. So here we have um, the article Strigid van Good in Quad Bart Willeman Begitched religion I can't I'm not really good with the language here but there's Tolkien talking about Tolkien there he's referring to the one paragraph if you're from Bel Belgium I'm sure you can read this there you go so hmm um, I didn't even I didn't even know what that this Game of Thrones thing is all about. I never even heard of that. I've been away from TV for so many years. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, okay, continuing. The next thing I want to show you on picture one taken from an or other Catholic magazine that my mother receives that shows how a young girl is uninitiated to become a pastor for young children in the church. Um. Uh, I could not take the article because my mother still wanted to read it. The girl completely in white dress with a vertical rose, rosy stripe up to her sneakers in the middle. In front of her are a number of young children listening to what she is telling. Behind her on the ground we see a sacrificial bowl, of course. Um, on the raised part we see a lot, lots of candlesticks with candles and altar with, with a white sheet. With a micro, uh, microphone, in other words, lots of pagan stone figures. Jesus on the cross and a statue of Mary with little Jesus. I'll show it closer here in just a minute. A young Catholic girl at young age is trained to become trained to become a pastor, messenger of God. In Jesus' name, what are they doing? I know. The article in this magazine states that it is a symbolic gesture to proclaim the faith of God at young age to young children um, and according to the children's learning level. Pure heresy. They say it is not the intention to appoint female pastors. How come then, on a few pages later, we come across a photo where you can see a female pastor washing the feet of a young girl? Picture number two. 
Um, no scripture for that in the Bible. Okay. Here's the first one. The young girl. She's not being a pastor. She's just being a pastor. A little bit of Jesuitical uh, double speak there. And we're not saying that women can be pastors. They're just they can just be in ministry. That's all. Washing the young girl's feet. Okay. Uh, the thing of feet washing, you got to watch out for that. I know the Mennonites are big on that, and the Amish as well, here in America. And they do it is this it's this special ordinance. It was it was there in the first century just because. It was a necessary thing. You wear sandals, you have to have your feet washed. It's just saying if you're helping out the saints. It's not some special holy ceremony, you know. I mean, somebody pulls up with a horse and you go out and you say, I'll, I'll tie it off for you. Well, that's an official ordinance that has to be continued now. No, it was just something that needed to be done in the first century. Uh, on the last photos, also from my mother's magazine, you can see an empty church. Um, with a banner on the right with a tree in the middle of the three pigeons around it. You can see this on picture number three. Maybe this refers to the Holy Trinity from these pagan Catholics. I've never seen this before in my life. <clears throat> I'll show that in a minute. Um, three birds? Question mark. I had ordered my photos from one to four. Strange that this photo is now number three. Let me know what your opinion is about this banner. <clears throat> Excuse me here. There's the banner right there. Kind of interesting. It's that uh, cross. If you do this, it's like an inverted pagan cross. There's a, actually a, a um, rune. I forget what it is, Tewas or something like that, that actually is an inverted cross with the two arms broken down. You can also make that into the peace symbol. It's an occult symbol. So some deep meaning going on there. The three birds, you know, and then you have the basic upside. It's kind of, the rune is actually this way, but this is sort of the inverted rune. And it's a crow's foot, which is also in the occult. Um, I think there was even a uh, regiment of Nazi soldiers that had some kind of a, like the crow's foot thing, the inverted cross, if I remember correctly from studying occult type of stuff. You can look that up. The last photo, number four, shows a crowded church with people with different and colored robes. The man in the blue robe is even smiling and holding a camera. It seems like a play. By the way, a church service is a play of philosophical nonsense. <laughs> also, like your opinions about this as possible. Yeah, weird. I don't know what to think about that one. That's It, it, it looks to me almost like a secret society thing. Like there's some kind of a Catholic knighthood type of deal because they'll get they dress up in these goofy outfits and they have all these different awards and medals on their clothing and things. That's what it looks like to me. It looks like a bunch of old men with their little secret society thing going on. But I have no idea. In, in Belgium, I don't know what it would be over there. But it just it just has that Masonic kind of stench to it, you know. Um, you know. The really royal princes of the holy secret of the hidden sepulcher of the sacred church of, you know. <laughs> I personally have another question that I wanted to ask you. Recently, I also have a biblical channel on YouTube with the name Belgian KJV Channel. I made this channel because I also want to express my faith in our Lord Jesus Christ here in this small country of Belgium. I noticed in various places where I am that there is never, nevertheless interest in the message of God spoken from the King James Version. I do believe that there's actually some awakening going on within uh, Europe. Um, I've seen that. Um, it's kind of interesting as, as God's closing the doors in America um, because the original intent of people coming to America was to practice religion freely here. Um, and that's going away now. And so I think it's going to, the Holy Spirit's going to move back to Europe to where people are in the bounds of their habitation. But um, I am pleased that there are people who are really interested in the Word of God. They specifically ask in Dutch where they can get more information about this. I tell them that I have a biblical channel on YouTube with currently one Dutch documentary on called Fornication of the Catholic Church with Dutch subtitles. This is about the nuns of the Catholic Church being harassed by priests and forced to have abortion when they become pregnant. Catholic predators. 
Because the question here where I live is growing about biblical truth, I have set the salvation message to you as a trailer and a few other videos you brought out on my channel too. Praise the Lord. That's really neat. Um, a few uploads of your videos that I put on my channel unchanged with Dutch text about which the video is about so the people here can read and understand is the Trinity is a pagan idol in Dutch. D. I I can't read that. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the Trinity was designed to confuse you in Dutch. He has a title listed there. For God's sake, don't go to church in Dutch. In God's name, I didn't see. I can, I can read a little bit of German, and it's a little bit similar, but I, I'm just, I'm a baby when it comes to this understanding of a lot of these languages. Um, my mother goes to this church shown on the thumbnail. Um, God's curse on Bible corruptors in Dutch. What is the real world? In Dutch, he has it there. Um, and the salvation message. This is to show people here already that the Catholic faith is a web of lies and illusions. The videos are unchanged, only the heading is adjusted to Dutch with a matching thumbnail. If this is a problem towards you or your videos, or am I infringing copyright here? Not at all. This is completely new to me, so I better ask you, otherwise I delete these videos immediately, no problem. My channel has just started and I don't have all the necessary materials such as camera and accessories. All help is welcome concerning rights, etc. I intend to translate your videos into Dutch in the future if that is poss a possibility and legal so that the people here can perfectly follow what is being said. Please tell me if I do things wrong, because as I said, this is all completely new to me. I want to tell people about the Word of God in the King James Bible shortly with my own material and videos, that here in this country they also know what the true message is about God. This was my question to you, so you can always advise me on this. Thanks. I hope you understood everything I wanted to say in English. Your English is very good. Thank. I definitely understand. Thanks for the many blessings of your ministry. It is really a gift from God for us. The best for your family and keep on, pre keep on preaching the Word of God. We pray for you daily. Greetings from Belgium and God bless you sincerely. K, first name, and E of the, you know, husband and wife there, K and, a, and E. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lead not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Um, authorized King James Version. Um, my policy on the copyright thing, use as many videos of mine as you want. Um, please don't change the content if you're going to translate them. Uh, try to get it as close to what I'm saying as possible. Um, and that's basically it. You're not infringing any kind of rights there or whatever else. Um, it's perfectly legal, perfectly fine to use my videos. I encourage that. Thank you for the things that you sent. It's very interesting. So I'm going to end this here because I can see my battery's about dead. And I'm going to get back to doing these other letters. Still have quite a stack of them here. Um, and we'll get back to that here in just a minute, but I got to change my battery. So see you in the next video.